And at that meeting room, I was invited by Dr. Scarlett and other leaders because I was trying to butt in and get into Seattle Public Schools. Right. I received news at that space that my mom had passed at that night. Wow. And I had to I had to leave the space during that meeting. I was getting calls and texts and I had to, you know, move forward with grief and, you know, mm. burying my mom and all of that, that part. But mm. what was crazy and just a beautiful turn of cycle and how this worked is I received that award in the same meeting room, in the same space, in the same, oh and it was a surprise as well. It was a wow. surprise, just like it was a surprise before. So it was like my mom has been there um, with me the whole time wow. um, through this journey. And so that's the meaning that that had uh, for me as well. So that meaning was deep and my mom was with me. Everyone, we are super happy to have Dr. William Jackson from the city of Seattle, the great state of Washington, with us on the My K-12 Career Show to share his story, his journey with our viewers and our listeners. Dr. Jackson is born and bred in Seattle, Washington. He's a graduate of the University of Washington with his doctorate degree. He's also a professor at the University of Washington. He's a principal at Nathan Hale High School in his fourth year as the principal and before that four years as an assistant principal. And we're going to just talk about all the great things he has going on with his life and in his career right now. So Dr. Jackson, thank you so much for coming on the show. Can you please share with our viewers and our listeners what's going on in your life and in your K-12 career right now, my brother? Hey, thank you for having me, Dr. Williams. And that was a really nice intro. I appreciate that. That, that was a good <laughs> lift. I appreciate it. You got me going. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, yes, a as mentioned, this is my fourth year serving as principal at Nathan Hill High School, and um, we're we're in November now, so things are rolling, and yeah. uh, there's much to speak about with schools, but also I I want to highlight a few focuses that I keep centered in my why and how I show up every day is truly equity, access, justice. Okay. And service and 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 sprinkle radical love on top of that and and that's mm -hmm. my recipe every single day and that's how I show up at home and in my community and in service as a principal and when I'm teaching at UW as well those are great opportunities I have that's awesome um, but thank you thank you again for having me today we're glad to have you my brother let's go back to the beginning in terms of your K twelve career how long have you been in the K twelve profession. Um, this is my, what did I start, 2011, 2012. Okay. So this is fairly newer, but also have a little bit, getting a little bit longer and had some deep experiences in Seattle. A lot of changes happened in Seattle in those years. Sure. A lot of court changes that impacted sure. Washington State education. And I had an opportunity to be a part of a lot of those. I actually began my teaching uh, career as a uh, World history, ethnic studies, black student union advisor, football coach at O'Day High School. And through that time, had some great times teaching. And some of my students I had great bonds with. And I was inspired to continue my leadership journey. And I ended up getting my principal certification uh, okay. through Seattle University. And I'm okay. um, also interning at O'Day while I was there and having an opportunity to uh, intern as well at Rogers High School with Jason Smith, who was one of my mentors. I met Dr. Keisha Scarlett uh, during that time as well. Who Shout was, out to Dr. Keisha Scarlett, <laughs> superintendent <laughs> at State man. Louis Public Schools. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and she was a principal coach, star mentor at that point, and she just took me under her wing and just uh, made sure that I was versed and ready and yeah. brought me in all the spaces. And that's when I had I felt like a million and one interviews to get into Seattle and Dr. Jill Hudson, okay. uh, the principal at the time for Nathan Hale, selected me to be her assistant principal 
And I, I had an opportunity to learn from and under her for four years. And she uh, was a brilliant leader and brilliant educator and was able to build community and um, collaboration, great teacher, uh, great professional development lead. So I, I learned a lot under her. And yeah, we can keep it at that time, but I can also trace it even further in all wow. of my mentors and wise people that have helped grow me as a leader. So, Wow. So you, you can't be that old, my brother. Like, how old are you? <laughs> Thir- 36. Wow. That's really cool, man. Like you, you really Thank doing you. it, man. Like that's awesome. And you started in 2011, 2012. You know, that's 11, 12 years, man. That's a long time, man. It goes quick, bro. Well, you know, it you're going to be knocking on do- year number 15 then 20. And you're like, where did all the years go? <laughs> yeah. Like you said, you've had a lot of students that not only have they inspired you, but you've also impl- impacted their lives. And that's one of the reasons why I started this video podcast, because I feel like Amazing leaders like yourself have impacted a lot of different students from all walks of life. And sometimes we don't get that gratitude or appreciation as a profession. So I want to honor you for all the work that you've done so far as a a K-12 leader. And I know there's many more years at 36, bro. You got a long time to go, bro. You know, and I'm sure you got young (laughs) kids. So, you know, you're going to be doing this for a while because, you know, (laughs) you got to be paid. So, so, yeah, that's true, man. Also, one of the things that made me reach out to you and get you on the show, you know, we follow each other on LinkedIn and of course, full transparency. I used to be a principal in Seattle Public Schools as well. So, you know, you're a brother from another. You know how that goes. (laughs) That's right. But, um, That's right. Yeah. And so I was looking on LinkedIn and I saw that you had posted that you were named as the secondary principal of the year for the entire state of Washington. So my brother, blessings to you. Very, very proud of you receiving that award. Well deserved. So, you Thank know, you. you heard it from me, guys. You are looking at the Washington, not Seattle, the Washington <laughs> secondary principal of the year. Dr. William Jackson, and I'm going to applaud you right here on this show, man, for that amazing achievement. And that's just one of many that you've already received and many that you will receive as you move forward with your career. So congratulations, my brother. How did that come about? Did they surprise you? I know I see how it does that. (laughs) I'll say this. Thank you so much, man. And there's a lot of people that I'm grateful for. And I I appreciate it. I'm going to receive receive these flowers and um i'm grateful and thankful for for all of them and um awards that come like this which are nominations says a lot and it, it humbled me and it makes me take a seat in april i was also awarded the alliance for education foster award for advancing racial equity and justice mm-hmm. in schools. that's right and that was another one that knocked me down too because those are nominations as well and mm-hmm. so to receive that as well as the Washington State Principal of the Year, that's big time because that's amongst my peers. And I, I learned that I received nominations from superintendents from uh, around Washington State that I've worked with in my program, uh, also from principal peers, from families, from wow. uh, teachers, from students. It just meant, it meant a lot. It sat me down again and I had to get on my knees and thank God. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot. That, that I held with that. So something that I will share, I received that award. I mean, I can tell how, how it came to be. Mm-hmm. And I see in 20, what was it, 2015 mm-hmm. or 2016, I was in, I was at the Seattle public schools meet and greet for aspiring um, assistant principals and school leaders and principals. Mm-hmm. And so when I was there, I, it was at the main entrance of the central office or the main meeting room and at that meeting room i was invited by dr scarlett and other leaders and because i was trying to butt in and get into seattle public schools right. i received news at that space that my mom had passed at that oh, night and i had to i had to leave the space during that meeting i was getting calls and texts and i had to you know move forward with grief and you know mm. burying my mom and all of that that part but mm. what was crazy and just a beautiful turn of cycle and how this worked is i received that award in the same meeting room in the same space in the same oh and it was a surprise as well 
It was a wow. surprise, just like it was a surprise before. So mm -hmm. it was like my mom has been there um, and with me the whole time wow. um, through this journey. And so that's the meaning that that had uh, for me as well. So that meaning was deep. And my mom was with me in my path of growth and growing as a leader. So I definitely gave a lot of thanks to God and thanks to my mom for everything that she's given to me. But yeah, that was a special moment. Two of my leaders, Makila and Jessica, they're amazing planners. So they helped mm -hmm. plan that event out. But it was yeah. really cool. Cool to be recognized around my peer principles. And it was amazing. It just, it, it, that, that was special to me. Yeah. Just the whole thing. Yeah, that's powerful, man. Yeah. So, man, I didn't know that about your mom, man. Like, wow. And you were, I mean, you're only 36 now, man. And that was like seven, eight years ago. You were super young. Yeah, like, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah so, for sure. you know, definitely my heart goes out to you for that because I know personally how much my mom means to me. And so I definitely hurt for you in that regard, man. But yeah, I know absolutely. she's looking down and smiling on you 100%. 100%. You, you definitely have a guardian angel for life. So that's really cool <laughs> as well, you know? 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Thank so, you. wow. So tell me more about your school. How many students are there? How many staff? Like, yeah. Sure. Yeah, we have 1,150 students. But on a given day, you subtract 300 for running start. Okay. Um, Running Start is where students leave our campus and go to the local community college to take college mm -hmm. courses, and they can select into that program. Right. So usually we have around 850, 950 walking campus every day. Sure. Pretty diverse student body. I don't have my demographics with me, but for the north end of Seattle, it's a pretty diverse community with lots of different groups of students yeah. from African American, East African, Somalian. Students that are Mexican, from Honduras, Salvadorian, South American, many languages that English isn't the first language of, yeah. of many of our students. So there's a lot of pockets of, of students and we're growing in our diversity amongst our staff, but that's taken time as well. But I can speak to that because that's my leadership and our, our team's leadership of ensuring that we have proper hiring practices yeah. that are advancing racial equity, justice and um, creating access and staffing arrangements, ensuring mm -hmm. that staffing has the, the right uh, arrangements for the classes that they teach and the students that they're teaching as well and inclusive uh, learning experiences for all students so that we're not segregating students as well. One way to compete against running start so that we have all students on campus is that we have college and high school and that's, we have English 101, that's mm -hmm. for all students. We don't create any barriers for that. And we have Ethnic Studies U.S. History. That's a college course as well nice. uh, for all juniors. And we also offer business math. That's a college and high school course as well. So these are college credits. We have more, but those are a few that we highlight. And one way to prepare students for this is we have um, honors English uh, for freshmen. And so we also nice. have a reading preparation course as well for freshmen that academic performance demonstrates if they need that extra reading support because it's rigorous and all students are going to receive access to English 101 as juniors. So we want to make sure that not only are they advanced learning is accessible for all and open to all and everyone takes it, but they're yeah. also prepared. You know? That's nice. So, I love that. Yeah. So when I think about your career, is K-12 education, was that always the plan or... <laughs> No. So I'll take it back. I played high school football at O'Day High School. Okay. I was a linebacker and I was a captain on my football team. Okay. And in that, in that time, and I was a black student union advisor, or not advisor, I was, what was it? The president of our black student union. Mm -hmm. So in those spaces, I learned a lot about leadership sure. and also supporting my peers, man. When you're playing football, you have a lot of your friends that are playing well, but they might be knocking on the door of eligibility and you need them for Friday night or black student union. There's a lot of service projects. I was in the national honor society as well. And so those are opportunities that helped me see myself as a leader. Sure. But when I got to college, it, it changed a lot because I feel like recruiting has its own issues, but mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of uh, what I experienced was my coaches recruiting a lot of black students and not preparing them for what life was like in college wow. and not even preparing the families for what they were going to see 
when they came to college because we're talking about getting connected to uh, advisors, class selections, you know, books, and all these different things that maybe they received a scholarship for and got paid for, but they don't even know how to access their course catalog to know what to register for, let alone major in. And so I started to take on those type of roles mm. and supporting my my teammates and also supporting other black students that were coming to to school when they when they showed up. Mm-hmm. And in my third year, this is at Western Washington Washington University. Okay. My third year, the program was cut. And so at that point I sent a really you know, nasty email to the president and said, you know, diversity is going to be impacted. I have no idea why you would ever cut the football program. This is all the students that came here are going to leave. And he forwarded that message to the admissions director. And his name was Bruce Shepard. He forwarded it to Karen Capetis. I need to give everyone their flowers. The the admissions director, Karen Capetis, and she reached out to me and said, hey, I read your email. Would you be interested in just come, coming to share that with our board? Wow. What you wrote. And I said, absolutely. So I came in there and I shared all the impacts and they said, awesome. So she walked me out and she said, hey, so you start on Monday. Are you interested to work here? That was an interview. And I said, <laughs> and that was for to work for admissions, to, to recruit and to do everything that I said would be impacted and what they should do as steps. And she was wow. like, this is going to be your team. And these are the steps that you, everything that you said, let's, let's launch all of those things that you said. And I was like, okay. And so I started working for the Office of Admissions, and the, the program that was launched was called HANDS, Helping Admit New and Diverse Students. Love and so I worked there for, yeah, so I worked there mm. for a few years while I was studying history and social studies. And, you know, after I was giving about a year or so, I was giving a lot of presentations and sharing with families and recruiting. And Karen Capeta said, hey, this is pretty awesome, but you're going to graduate soon. Have you considered going into education? Wow. And and I said, no. She said, you would be a great leader. And also, you know, I have a principal that I would like to connect you with. And, you know, I think you should be a school leader, a principal. And and you, she said, you're studying history, right? And I got to get flowers because this is a white woman. So, I wow. mean, this is, we we, we, all, we typically have this, this script that white, you know, of, you know, white folks with black folks. And I, that's real. And that's, uh-huh. that's existing as to why we're in education, fighting for justice and equity. But sometimes the script isn't always that script. And this was a white woman who went out of her way to, oh, yeah. to support and to see, you know, what the possibilities of my future as well. Yeah, she saw great. And so, yeah, yeah I, and, I'm, and I'm grateful for that. And she connected with me with uh, Dr. Kristen French. And Kristen French, Dr. French said, um, uh, before she connected me, she said, um, uh, hey, there's this class that I just want you to sit down on before you consider going into grad school and doing this step, or before you consider going into the teaching, going into teaching, I, I do want you to go into the grad school, but just give it a shot, see what you think. They're just talking about the prison system and the, you know, how it connects to education. She made it real simple for me to understand. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And so she was like, here, take this reading. And the reading was a discipline and punishment. And so mm-hmm. I was like super into it. And I was like, wow, what is this about this? And I didn't draw the connection to mm-hmm. the, the, the pathway to prison at that point. I, yeah. But I was noticing what was happening with my teammates mm-hmm. and how they were and what was happening with my friends growing up and what was good. And, but I had never drew the education connection mm-hmm. to what was happening to black people in our school system. Sure. And so then we get into, I get into this class and it was a discussion about the pathway to prison and the pipeline. Yeah, and it was a 700 pipeline. level. Yeah. The school, the school the prison pipeline. And they were bringing up all these stats and data. And I was just chiming in, sharing how I felt about it in my experience. And the teacher said, Hey, this is a 700 level course. Um, we would love for you to be in it. You don't have to pay for it. Just, we can always, wow. you can already get graduate credit. And uh, then that's when she connected me with the president for Woodring College of Education. And okay. that's when they, they said, yeah, you, you need to apply to the graduate school and, and don't even worry about your GRE scores or anything like that. Wow. Take the GRE, take all of this. And this is why I believe in access and creating access, because a lot of people created access for me and ensured that I had opportunities. And that's what I think 
more of us should do as well because there are barriers there's barriers that can get in our way sure and so that's that's what that's where it started and my final capstone for woodering college of education when i graduated was examining the inequities in our school system and so i've spent the past 10 11 12 years examining and addressing them um and i feel pretty proud about that so uh Principal of the year is more of a culmination of all of that, I feel. No, that's powerful. And and you shared some things that I think bear repeating in terms of what brought you to this point right now. Like it, you know, even when we talk about the the white lady that helped you, you know, I think this is a good lesson that you can't judge a book by its cover. Yes, there's people that, you know, might not have your best interests at heart, but that's not everybody. And, right. and, and second of all, like, this is a relationship business. Like, obviously she saw something in you and she was willing to help and support you regardless of, and maybe even because of your skin color, not in spite yeah. of, like, because of, <laughs> like, That's we need thing. a young black man like That's you true. to be in education to make an impact. Right. And so yeah, she, didn't, she didn't just talk it, she walked it. So I think that's a very powerful lesson. And also, I think another lesson that can be learned from your story is that no person is an island unto themselves, right? Like, you're here, I'm here, we're two black men, one old me, and one young you, you know? And truthfully, we had people that paved the way for us to be where we are today, right? Like, no person got here by themselves, right? And so this is a true relationship business and it's important to do the networking because when I, when I hear your story, I'm hearing and seeing a lot of mentors that poured into Dr. William Jackson, whether we're talking about when you were in college with this particular lady or, you know, in your career with somebody like Dr. Scarlett, like, and I'm sure you got multiple people as well, other than those two, but those are two great examples, right? Uh, You're in school, getting that support and getting to use your word access, right? Yep. Or whether you're, you know, in the actual, you know, work arena and you have somebody that pours into you and sees that leadership in you and they help bring it out as well. So, yeah, that's really powerful, man. Thank you for Thank sharing. You, that. you Thank know, you. I think can I, I share that. can I share one more uh, sure, access absolutely. story? Please. Uh when I when I was an assistant principal by Nathan Hale, I was determined to get my doctorate in education and superintendent certification okay. because I thought that the the reason why I originally wanted to go to take that route was access for black men as principals. I, I, I was just raised. You just got to outwork everybody. You need a superintendent certification to get a principal job. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> um, and that's not just that, but that's part of it. But also, um, to to have the um, the ability and the, all of the necessary pieces to be able to create that access. So when I applied to the University of Washington and did my interview, there was Dr. Anthony Craig, who's my mentor. I call him my uncle right now. Okay. He was one of my interviews, and then there was another person who was interviewing me as well. And they peppered me with a lot of questions, and then there was a lot of concern about my age and experience at the time. And so what he said to me as we came out was, man, don't even worry about it. Just continue to be yourself. And um, we're excited to have you. He's, yeah. And so, and through the whole time during that experience, that was a moment in my life and in my career where I felt like he saw me and he's, and he's indigenous Yakima. Um, okay. So he's, he, he's, he's full a hundred percent and unapologetic, man. And so I felt like he saw a lot of me, and to the point where through my whole time as a student in leadership for learning, when I felt sometimes imposter syndrome around superintendents, around folks that were the executive directors, chiefs of staff, all these different roles, he was always just lifting me and just saying, man, you got this, like you're good. I to the point where when we graduated, when our cohort graduated, he said, would you be interested in coming back and teaching? Wow. And so that's, and so that's the, that's, like a full circle for me, that's a that's something that God has always showed me. And that's why I always try to give back and always try to uh, create that. And so to that point, man, and he's still in my life, still a mentor. That's awesome. Mine, so, that's a powerful yeah. story. I'm going to have to get him on the show. 100. Absolutely. Are you listening, Dr. Craig? <laughs> you next, bro. 
<laughs> I, I will connect it for sure with you. 100%. Yeah. Man, this is really powerful. You know me and you could talk forever, my brother. <laughs> so what's the future? Let's say hypothetically, we know this isn't going to happen, but let's say hypothetically we didn't talk for the next five years. Where is Dr. Jackson five years from now going into 2029? If I can determine the future? Uh, yeah. With, if I'm... Speak it into existence, my brother. Speak it into existence. Partnership with God. I'm, I'm the superintendent. All right. Absolutely. Superintendent Jackson. I yes. love it. 100%. Yes. That's what's up. Is it going to be in Washington? I'd hope so. Okay. Very competitive. It's very competitive. But I would hope so. That's where I, I do like California as well. I like the sun. I can't lie. <laughs> but I'm raised in Seattle, Washington. That's where my heart is, man. I like the seasonal change. That's a part of who I am. That's a part of my identity. So it, in raising my daughter out here, is, it has been beautiful. And I want to continue to. But if if we move, we move. But that's the goal, for sure. Yeah. Well, that's powerful. And I like how you you know ended it up, how you said it, because like one of your mentors and my mentors, Dr. Scarlett, had to get her first superintendency in, in my state. You know, I'm from Missouri. So she had to go all the way to St. Louis to get her first superintendency. That's so right. you know, there's an old saying, if you want to make God smile, tell him your plans because he might have other plans. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why you set me up, man. That's why. <laughs> but you're open, right? Yeah, like you're yeah, open. Absolutely. Like you, uh, Absolutely. You have definitely made it known what the desire of your heart is, but you yeah. also ended it up by saying, hey, whatever comes, you know? And so, but, you know, I always believe in things going full circle as well. Like maybe you go to another state, district, whatever, and you come back. You just never know. These things have a way of just going full circle, my brother. And so you you have enough. The one thing you have is time. And yeah, I can absolutely see that in your future, probably sooner rather than later. So keep striving for that, my brother. But Man, I'm super grateful that you came on the show. This isn't the last time you're going to be on my show, my brother, because you have di- just dropped all these little golden nuggets about how you've been paying it forward, about the importance of access, Thank about you. the importance of equity, particularly when it comes to people that look like us. So very grateful for that. And I'm I'm all about that as well. And so, yeah, I definitely want to continue those conversations. But before you leave, Would you please share with our viewers and our listeners some parting words of wisdom? Tell us how we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. Absolutely. I would like to share one last thing. No new story. But one last thing is that one thing that I find is important as an educator or as somebody who is an influence in any area of helping others grow is to find truly your why and what's important to you. Mm. I had the privilege of growing up in Section 8 and public housing, receiving food stamps, eating food from the food bank, Mm. while also going to private schools through a lot of support from people. So I had the privilege to see multiple worlds. Mm. And that gave me an understanding of how to connect with multiple types of people. And so through that, I saw the givers of the world, the wise people of the world, and many folks who made mistakes and errors. And that helped me uh, make decisions that have been um, helpful and beneficial to myself and my family. Um, But ultimately, uh, where I was able to find my why was from that. And so that's where I push my growth and push uh, to ensure that I'm centered in my why, which is equity, access, justice, and uh, service with a sprinkle of radical love to ensure that we all have uh, opportunities. So that's what I would give. You can find me on LinkedIn at William Jackson. You can find me on Twitter at Mr. W.L. Jackson. And you can reach out to me at Dr. W.L. Jackson at gmail.com. Wonderful, my brother. We'll definitely make sure that we put all of your contact information in the show notes. I really love that advice you gave. Find your why, people. Find your why. It will drive you. It will help you in those tough times. Find your why in in terms of why you're in this amazing K-12 profession. Once again, Dr. Jackson, thank you so much for coming on the show. We definitely wish you all the best. Obviously, you know, we're going to stay 100% connected. And I really appreciate you for coming on and just sharing your story, your heart with our viewers and our listeners. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you for the flowers, too. All righty.